In the Ultimate Bicycle Chain Lubricant Test, a few viewers thought I was unfair to squirt because I didn't allow it to dry overnight as the manufacturer recommends. For the sand test, I did allow squirt to dry overnight and it came in second place. For the water test, I only allowed squirt to dry for about three hours, but it came in first place for that test. And for the sling test, after testing muck off dry and seeing there was no sling, I gave all three dry lubes a tie for first place, assuming all of them would not have sling. So the area where I think a few viewers think I was unfair to squirt was probably in the friction test. You might recall that Squirt had a wear scar of 6.16 millimeters, and that was 75% of the dry control at 8.14 millimeters. I thought that having the wheel rotating in a bath of replenishing lubricant would be of benefit to all lubricants, but a few viewers think that since Squirt is 60 to 70% water, and water is not a very good lubricant, that that might have been what hurt Squirt in that test. Last night, I got out the friction testing machine, I set it up, and I applied a nice even coat of squirt to the wheel. I picked a new cylinder and applied an even coat to that as well. They've dried overnight and now I'm ready to test them. All right, here we go, begin. That sounded bad at the end. What we see here is that testing squirt dry creates a 7.22 millimeter wear scar and that is 88% of the dry control. For comparison, I went and pulled down one of the lowest viscosity lubricants from the shelf, and that was Purple Extreme. I wanted to see what it would do without a replenishment bath, and I was surprised by the results. And it sounds really good. This is no reservoir. Okay, it only drew 3.36 amps. Nearly identical performance without a reservoir as with a reservoir. Now what I think's happening is, a lubricant like Squirt gets pushed out in a dry state, and then it's just metal on metal and it just continues to cause a wear scar. Whereas a low viscosity lubricant is going to be able to flow back in and still provide protection. In the water test, when I was inspecting the chains, I observed that Squirt was very stiff. And in fact, I saved all of the chains as a memento with the answer key, but I don't need that in order to find the Squirt chain. It is the only one that maintains a kink even after all that time. I wanna know if that stiffness I observed translates into any chain drag and loss of power, and so I've designed a simple little test to figure that out. I've cleaned and degreased this chain and I've added Purple Extreme, a low viscosity and low friction lubricant. Using this digital force gauge, I'm going to measure how much force it takes to get the crank started and the wheel spinning with the rear derailleur in the highest gear and the tightest angles around the jockey wheels and the rear cassette. To ensure the consistent pull is applied, I will be using this six pound weight to pull on the force gauge. First test. 3.4 pounds of force. Second test. 3.4 pounds of force. Third test. 3.4 pounds of force. Resetting the crank and the wheel to the same position every time, I found that it took 3.4 pounds of force in order to get the wheel spinning in the highest gear on the rear derailleur. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean and degrease this chain fully. I'm going to apply squirt as the manufacturer recommends, applying one coat, waiting five minutes and applying another coat. I'm going to let it set up overnight and then I'll be back in the morning to test and see if it increases the drag of the chain. Clean, dried, lubed, and ready to go. It's now been three days since I cleaned and degreased this chain fully and then applied squirt as directed by the manufacturer. The first thing that I'm going to do though is I'm going to spin the crank 50 times to break up any initial stiffness in the chain. All right, let's get this all set up. All right, we're zero eyes, ready? And drop number one. 3.6 pounds. Test number two, and go. 3.6 pounds of force. Okay, third and final test. Dropping the weight. 3.6 pounds of force. This test showed me that there was a consistent 3.6 pounds of force required in order to get this wheel started from a dead stop and that is 0.2 pounds more than the low viscosity lubricant Purple Extreme. Now all this talk of squirt and wax has made me think, well I wanna compare how squirt performs compared to just wax. So I have a high grade paraffin candle here and I wanna see how it can protect against friction and wear.
Now I could just do the fun thing and light this candle on fire and let the dripping wax fall onto the wheel, but I don't want the direct flame to mess with the chemical makeup of the paraffin at all. Instead, I'm gonna apply the other end of the candle to the wheel as the wheel is rotating, and I'm gonna allow the heat from the friction to melt the paraffin and apply it to the wheel. All right, that looks like a good coating of wax on the wheel. Let's give this a try. At just a little bit over seven millimeters, the paraffin from the candle performed slightly better than Squirt did dry. Well, there you have it. I tested Squirt in a dry state as the manufacturer recommends, and what I ended up with was a one millimeter larger wear scar. In fact, I also think that Squirt makes your chain stiff and introduces chain drag, and so I might have worked it out if I went and rode this bike around for a few miles or so, but I'm not intending to do that because I'm just not impressed with Wax's performance and protection against wear. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna change this baby out to a single speed, and when I do, I'm gonna use a different lubricant. Later.